Well, thank you all for coming. Um, it, it means a great deal to me. I, I've changed my life to be here with you. Um, a lot of times people have asked me, you know, why did I, why did I stop? You know, I, I've been telling people for a long time, you know, I was chasing my wife's grandfather who happens to be buried here in San Francisco, a producer named Walter Wanger, who uh, made about 100 movies. So I still have 30 movies to make, so I haven't, uh, I haven't stopped. But I really did, you know, come here to a large degree because of all of you. You know, I came here, um, you know, you come to San Francisco and you see this incredible rich history of, of the cultural institutions, the opera, the museums, the ballet, the symphony, you know, it's, it's top, top level. You know, some of my heroes are the folks who have been the leaders here, along with that bug, um, you know, that, that have inspired me. The, you know, really from the beginning, when I started sitting down, the, just the, the culture of innovation that, that's here has been a real driver for me. But even more so, you know, it's what I see, I've always seen in the community that this commitment to diversity and empathy and really ambition. And, you know, I've said that to my friends a lot and they say, Ted, but what does that mean about cinema? You know, empathy, ambition, diversity. That's not movies, but uh, there's an actor who has done some uh, movies with me who didn't show up in that reel and will go nameless. But uh, years ago, he and I hung out on Friday night and on Monday he showed up in my office never having gone home. He had lost his shirt, but still had a jacket like this, and he was very wound up for some reason. But he, he said he had figured it out. You know, he had said, my company then was called Good Machine. And he said, don't you get it, Ted? You know, Good Machine, God Machine. You work with Ang Lee, the angel, you know, and you're the hope. This is what it's all about. And I, I kind of looked at him like he'd been up for 48 hours for some reason. But he said something to me that has always been a, a, an inspiration in that moment of craziness. You know, sometimes that's what it yields. And that was, you know, that what our job is as artists, as creators, is to tell people to look over there, to see what it could become. And in New York, I was looking over here. You know, you guys have already built a lot of what I want to have that the independent film world, the film world in general, become. Um, you know, you, you showed me, you showed me the, the, the there. Um, but that's not the only reason I came here. You know, I came here because I'm truly concerned that what I really love could be lost. That the, the culture that I've worked really hard to, to contribute to couldn't uh, be built again if we wanted to. I came here, you know, because I, I truly love cinema. From the very beginning, it showed me that movies can change people's lives. You know, I grew up in a, a I came here from New York, but I grew up in a really small town, 4,000 people. Virtually everyone I knew there worked for, for General Electric. Um, I think, you know, everyone but my mom worked for General Electric. <laughs> and uh, my mom, would, we were talking about this today with, with some of the staff, we were talking about when we realized we loved movies. And she would take me in to Boston to see Marx Brothers and Charlie Chaplin, Buster Keaton. And I would come back to my small working class town and try to walk like this and go like this to my friends. I was about, you know, nine, ten years old. And they thought I was weird. They didn't understand the jokes that I got. You know, um, they, you know, years later as I hit my teens and my mom would take me to see movies by directors like Renoir and Truffaut and Kurosawa, you know, I might have been in a small town, but I knew it was a big world. And, you know, I have to say, like, in, uh, like when I think about it, and I think you can see a little bit, of like how it makes me feel, you know, it was, you know, living in the small area, you know, you think you're all alone, but those movies showed me that I had to be brave, that I had to go out and try to create things, and 
when I started making movies, I was, you know, angry young man in your 20s. You know, you, you, you feel like, I don't want this world that I inherited. They got it all wrong. What can I do? And it was the process of making movies and seeing the movies that my friends created that showed me that it didn't have to be that way, that we could build it in a different way along... Um, you know, when uh, I started, once I'd lived in New York for a while, and that alienation of the big city, you know, starts to hit you, you start worrying, like, oh, I'm going to be alone for the rest of my life, you know, that I'll never connect with anyone that matters to me, you know. And movies did give me that inspiration to keep, you know, trying to find the folks, and frankly, introduce me to my wife, to my friends, you know, to the folks I connected with. And, you know, today, when I look for, like, how do I keep, working hard, contributing to society, it is precisely that fact that I really do believe and know that movies can bring all of us together a lot closer and have a real influence in how the world is shaped. You guys know that. You know through the commitment that you've already given to the, the film society that films are ambassadors. They bring us together with, with folks from all over the world teach us what we don't know about other people, and give us that, that language to talk about the really difficult things. I've made a lot of movies about children dying, you know, about people losing everything. I've made some movies that are funny, too, that tell you the reason you want to live, live, what you want to enjoy. You know, I, I don't know how we would communicate those things as well as we do without the power of, of movies. So I came here, you know, uh, to San Francisco, you know, out of that love of cinema, but out of the, the, the fear that we're at a crazy point in life where all of that really can be lost. You know, my, my friends from the nature of working film are generally movie people. And I can tell you other producers such as myself, other directors that I've known for a long time who have told me, I don't know what to do, I need to get a second job, or I have to get a third job. I don't know what to do. It's an absurd period of time we're living in, where the price of making movies has gotten lower and lower. The price of distributing movies and marketing films has gotten lower and lower. Yet for the filmmakers, it's harder and harder to survive. You know that even though we live in a time of, you know, grand abundance, you know that so many movies are made, we don't know where to find them. We don't know. We don't have proper curators or filters. Uh, we, 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 we start to despair that it's too much, you know. I, I frequently have, have told people about this uh, Eureka moment I had uh, about a year and a half ago. Uh, as you get to know me, you'll learn that I, I have a deep devotion to lists. I like to uh, you know, keep track of all different sorts of things. And I was getting out of the shower one day, that's where I do some of my best thinking, you know. <laughs> and it occurred to me, Eureka, you know, I hit saturation point. And what I mean by that is I had already determined every movie I wanted to see for the rest of my life, plus what is now eight years, at my maximum rate of consumption. So about if, if I already, you know, I consume about 250 movies a year, you know, and I'm going to have to live an extra eight years beyond what I'm expected to complete that. And now those are movies that are already made, right? Those, those are films that have great names next to them, like Truffaut, Curacao, or Renoir, and, and, and others, you know. Um, and it makes you wonder sometimes if that we have so much, how come we haven't found it? How come more people haven't connected it? And what do we need with new movies, too, if the great ones aren't even being consumed? But it's precisely that, that the, the, the movies that are, aren't going to be made by those dead guys named Truffaut, Renoir, Kinosawa, that are going to be made by some of the filmmakers here in the room, they're about the world that we're living in today, about the people that we, expect, that we experience in our day-to-day -day life that we need to connect with. And that is an urgent situation. We, we are, you know, uh, we get new tools all the time, you know, new, new things that are supposed to be making it easier for us to connect. I think you all know of the, the wonderful phenomenon of, of email that was supposed to make our lives so much easier, but keep <laughs> us all like locked in, 
you know, much more productive, right? You know, but you know, you're re you're answering you know 200 emails a day from people you don't know. Uh, we we need to help the filmmakers understand what are the best practices, what are the best tools, how they get their work made. It's intimidating to know that there are 173 digital platforms available to you right now in America, virtually free of use if you're a filmmaker. You're worried about what to do. We need guidance. This can all work, but we need folks to start to show us a, a better way. I, I curated a uh, film series for the, la for the last three and a half years in New York about <coughs> underseen uh, American independent movies. I started doing it you know, because it was clear to me that we're in this time where good movies don't get seen. You know, people say, oh, what do you care, Ted, that 50,000 movies are made globally on an annual basis? You know, those movies don't matter. They're not very good. That's a lie. Those movies aren't connecting to the right people. They're, they're, there's an audience, I believe, for every single film. It's not the mass market audience. It's not the audience that requires that you spend $30 million a year uh, a film marketing it. It's films that audiences will be much smaller. We have to work with those artists to connect with the right audiences. I got to make 68 movies so far, you know, uh, because I came along at a very unique period that's a lot like this period. You know, you start to recognize that art and audiences like yourselves, artists and technology changes much faster than the markets or the business does. That there's a gap, a big lag behind. And that people can moan about, they can wonder, you know, why won't people do what we know is best for them to make it work? But there's always that gap between desire and the willingness to do it, between the thought and the expression. That's a tremendous opportunity. And I've been looking at that for about three or four years, trying to speak to people about it. And I realized that I couldn't do it by, by myself, that I needed an organization and a community to do it. The invitation that Pat and the board gave me to come here was really, you know, like the Godfather, an offer I couldn't refuse. You know, I had, you know, and there was no gun to my head, believe me. I, I had to take that step. Because, you know, every single day I did watch another filmmaker that I knew, who I knew had talent, that I knew had an audience, that I knew that had something really important to say, say to me, I don't think I can keep doing it, Ted. We're in a dangerous situation. I'm scared. People need our support. And we can do it here in San Francisco. I stood up uh, last week at Lincoln Center at a kind of think tank event and got to say for the very first time that I'm Ted Hope, and I'm the executive director of the San Francisco <laughs> <Home> Society. <laughs> in New York, and I got a response a lot like that. They were a little more boisterous, so I think I had to work with guys on that. But it was a thrill. It made the hair on the back of my neck truly, you know, stand up. And I spoke precisely about these problems that, that, that we're facing right now. But I had to say that already I was, like, chomping at the bit, thrilled that I was finally going to get to go over there to that place where we can show you know, what we can reach to and aspire to, what cinema can do, that I, I was, you know, had been handed a, a chance. You know, I wouldn't have come here if it wasn't for the great tradition that all of you have, have, have built. Uh, I shouldn't be the only one standing up here right now. You know, I came because of great programs and I would like to uh, have three of our uh, directors Rachel Rosen, hey. Joanne Pizzot, hey. Michelle Smith. Hey. I can't say that because you know, we talked about this before. But I, ha I have to say, you know, like, I've come to the film festival, I've had my, my films here, I came this past year, you know, and I saw precisely that, that passport to other worlds and other thoughts, other ideas, other people who I didn't know that Rachel and the programming brought, you know. 
I came, uh, I've been here for, you know, all of, uh, I think, eight days now, and I've been to the fall season. Uh, how many of you have? <laughs> Clearly not enough, because you guys are missing out. You know, um, I, I went to the, the, the Hong Kong cinema days. I saw a film that I've been longing to see that I had maybe, you know, when Rachel and I were talking, maybe I had a, a slightly jaded view to it. But it charmed me and warmed me. Uh, comrades, a love story uh, along the way. You know, uh, there is an incredibly great program uh, coming up with, with, with French cinema. There's an incredibly great program coming up with Taiwan Days. And there's an incredibly great program coming up with both, both New Italian Cinema and Cinema at the Bay. You are doing yourselves a disservice if you're not there with me to see those movies. So it's, it's been a lot of hard work, and you know, I'm here because of Rachel. You know? yeah. um, <laughs> but it doesn't end there. You know, like people keep coming up to me in New York where they don't know better and they think they do, um, <laughs> saying, you know, so you're there, you're running the, the, the film festival, right? And it's like, no, I'm not running the film festival. I came there for a film society. I came for one of the strongest education programs that I've seen dealing with film. Joanne and the program uh, deliver, they, they, they bring film and filmmakers to over 10,000 uh, high school students and elementary students in the Bay Area. That's like, you know, a lot more than you are here in the room. There's a lot of you here in the room, you know. I had my funnest day, I have to admit, so far being in, um, San Francisco and getting to be the executive director of the San <laughs> Because I got to lead a two hour uh, discussion with Anna Bowden, one of our artists in residence, the fourth one that, that we've had, a filmmaker uh, who is not just a writer, not just a director, but also an editor and a, and a great. That's not me, that's someone else's <laughs> I thought I was the only one that had the crickets. But, but, but someone that is a great collaborator whose work has been really uh, inspiring to me, as I imagine it has been to the, how many people has, uh, how many classes has she gone to so, so far? So far, she's already been to four college classes and four high school classes, and she has about seven more. What have you done today? <laughs> you know, Anna's here in the room somewhere. Um, there she is. Oh. Thank you for coming here, Anna. And, um, and that's just the tip of the, tip of the iceberg, you know. I came here not just because of Rachel and Joanne, I came here also because of Michelle and Filmmaker 360. I don't believe, and I haven't actually checked that, that, that there's an organization that gives out more in artist grants than, uh, that is a cinema organization than the Film Society. True. And even if it wasn't, I would say it, I swear. <laughs> this is right now to the filmmaking community you know we live in a market driven culture every filmmaker in America the most prolific nation in the world whether they know it or not has to generally work for the market think about what is going to sell what is going to get released you know it's wonderful we have the most diverse film culture in the world but it's also a trap and you wonder sometimes as you do brainstorming what would it be like if we could actually think freely and pursue the topics and the forms of expression that we really, really like. Well, we have a great example for that now. The Film Society was one of the, the first funders of a little movie that nobody thought it could become anything. Perhaps you've seen The Beast of the Southern Wild, the grand prize winner at the Sundance Film Festival, the first funders of, of that film. Who are they, Michelle? <laughs> and us, right. We were among the first, exactly. Take credit! You know, um, but it, do, it also just doesn't stop, stop there. You know, for those of you that, that came out to, uh, to see um, the, the film house, you'd find ten filmmakers, Carlton among them, you know, who, who are now are able to get their work done by being given the support services that they, they need, you know? And that, again, is just the tip of the iceberg. There is so much more to be done, you know? I love the tradition, the services, the, 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 the programs, 
that these women and this organization has built with the support of all of you. It brought me to San Francisco. But that history, that rich tradition, is again just where it starts. You know, it's the future that really gets me excited. The positive future. Because I look at that dark side. For those of you that are producers, you know, you probably know that one of the best skills you can have is a dark paranoia of how bad it can come. But it's warranted right now, and there's one way to solve it. We solve it by working together to build it better. We really can do it here. Everything that you guys, that this city, that this culture has built in San Francisco has proven that to me. You know, I look forward to coming back here two years, three years, five years, ten years from now, where we all take stock on where we were today and where we are then, and we see really what a vibrant, diverse, ambitious culture can be. But we can't do it without you. So thank you tonight for coming here. Let's look to the future. Um, some of you might, uh, you know, recognize seeing this poster, might have already made plans tomorrow to watch the debate. You know, you're going to start to think about voting for the, the future of the world that you want. But there's one thing that you can do right now, which is vote for the culture that you want. And unfortunately, the way you do that is with your dollars. You know, so don't let the world that I love, the movies that I love, the cinema that I love, and an institution that I know I'm going to love go away. We need your help. Thanks for coming tonight. But that's just the start. So. Yeah.